Hello everyone, I am the Medity Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from the D&D Honor Among Thieves secret lair, Edgen Larcenist Ludinist. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel. But the very best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck text, gifts, and more. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Edgen is a 3-3 human bard for 1 generic, 1 blue, and 1 red. He lets you foretell any non-land card in your hand without foretell for 2 generic less than its casting cost. This is the ability I focus more on for this deck. Your imagination is the limit to how you can make the most of this ability, especially since foretelling a card is similar to morphing a creature. It's a special ability and doesn't enter the stack, so no one can respond to you foretelling a card. Sure, they can respond when you actually cast it, but you foretelling a card can't be. His triggered ability when you cast your second spell each turn, which goes to creature and opponent controls, is just a cute little bonus. However, being able to save cards in your hand in exile via foretell is a pretty strong ability in the command zone. This allows you to store cards when you're wheeling away, which is what this deck aims to do. With a wheel effect on the stack, you can pay 2 generic for each non-land card you want to still have access to, assuming you're wheeling within your own turn. Starting with the wheels that discard to then draw, we have Incendiary Command, Jace's Archivist, Corvat's Fury, Magus of the Wheel, Memory Jar, Reforge the Soul, Runehorn Hellkite, Wheel of Fate, Wheel of Misfortune, and Windfall. These are pretty standard when it comes to wheel effects. Jace's Archivist is amazing at being able to windfall every turn, which is nothing to scoff at. Runehorn Hellkite might be costly, but it's amazing since it can be activated from the graveyard, allowing you to wheel into another wheel effect. Wheel of Fate being suspended also synergizes with the deck, which we'll soon see. Molten Psyche and Winds of Change are the wheels that don't discard but shuffle the hand into the library. Thanks to this reprint, Winds of Change is much cheaper and accessible now. Molten Psyche also functions as a burn effect which the deck seeks to do, but we'll get into that later. Suffice it to say that this deals a ton of damage, possibly game ending damage, if you manage to chain a bunch of wheels together. Commit to Memory, Echo of Eons, Game Plan, and Time Reversal are the wheels that shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library. Well, the memory half at least. Although Commit is still a decent enough interaction effect to then get into the graveyard to wheel later. Unfortunately, only Echo of Eons isn't exiled after being cast, but if you flashback it, it will. These are amazing at recovering our graveyards, but can also disrupt the graveyard player. Learn from the past isn't a wheel per se, but it can be stored in exile via foretell in case an opponent has their own graveyard hate effect against us. If it was foretold, then it only costs one and a blue to shuffle our graveyard into our library and then draw a card in response, so it's pretty useful here. Besides all these wheels, the deck also aims to draw a bunch of cards while also discarding cards with cheap instants that can be abused via Fartel. Catalog, Fast and Furious, Stern Lesson, Tragic Lesson, Frantic Search, Big Score, and Unexpected Windfall are some of these effects. Well, the first half of Fast and Furious. At least Furious can be used as a board wipe for small creatures if need be. Since these all have a generic cost of 2, we can foretell them and then essentially only pay for the colored part of their cost when casting from Exile. While we have no loss of mana, we can store them for later when we have the things we need in play to make the most of them, which we'll soon see. As a bonus, if we do foretell them and cast them later on, the last three have the bonus of giving us mana acceleration. Frantic Search is a 2 for 2 draw discard effect, but it untaps 3 lands when it resolves. If we foretold this at an earlier turn, then we can cast it for just 1 blue and then untap 3 lands. If those lands tap for 2 mana, then we just accelerated our mana by a significant amount. Big score and unexpected windfall creating 2 treasure tokens means that they essentially paid for themselves, which is great. Containment Construct helps us with all these discard effects in case we don't control Edgen. While we can use Edgen to foretell any card we don't want to lose while a wheel or loot effect is on the stack, if we don't have him we can still use the Construct to exile any wheel a previous wheel would have discarded away. That way we can still cast a wheel into another wheel, etc. As for why we want to be drawing and or discarding so many cards, it's to potentially end the game via burning effects. Brawlin' Sky Shark Rider and Gladehorn Buccaneer hurt all opponents when we discard a card. If we're able to begin discarding a ton of cards per turn, we can potentially close out the game fairly quickly, possibly in the same turn if we can chain into multiple wheel effects. As a bonus, Brawlin' also becomes buff as hell after resolving a couple of wheels via those plus one plus one counters. Psychosis Crawler and the Locust God care about us drawing cards. 
The first one has each opponent lose one life whenever we draw a card, plus its power toughness is equal to the number of cards in our hand, which is nothing to scoff at. The Locust God doesn't deal damage per se, but it creates 1-1 one, one hasty flyers whenever we draw a card. If we're drawing enough cards in our turn, then we have an army of weenies to send across the board. We can also pay 4 to rummage 1 in a pinch. Besides the wheels to fuel these potential win cons, the deck's also running Drown in Dreams, Even the Score, Stroke of Genius, and Expansion and Explosion. Well, the Explosion half is the Pay X to Draw X instant. While these will only trigger the last two cards instead of also Brolin and the Buccaneer like the other cards do, they're still powerful instants in any blue deck. Thanks to foretelling them, we can bank them and use them when we have the mana to really sink into that X. At the very least, that covers the two generic mana in the cost of Drown in Dreams and Stroke of Genius, so they essentially only cost X and 1 blue. Even the score is absolutely busted when played off a wheel because then its triple blue cost is ignored when casting it. CK Restoration is another amazing card draw spell in the deck and it doesn't take up a spot in the deck if you aren't greedy and use it as a land when you need the land drop. Best of all, not only does this draw you into a ton of cards if you already had a fat hand, but it also gives you a limitless hand size for the rest of the game. Reliquary Tower, Thought Vessel, and Decanter of Endless Water do the same thing and are also included for obvious reasons. The last two especially because the deck isn't green, but we'll see the rest of the mana rocks later on. As for making the most of foretelling cards per se, we want cards that care about us casting things from exile or elsewhere from our hand. Keeper of Secrets and Passionate Archaeologist are some more burn effects in the deck that hurt opponents whenever we cast those spells from exile. Since they care about the mana value of the spell being cast, it doesn't matter how much mana we paid for it, so long as it came from exile. So casting something like Blasphemous Act from exile will still deal 9 damage when it enters the stack, even if we only paid 1 red mana for it, so long as we played it from exile. By the way, this is in the deck since all decks need a board wipe of some kind. Returning from the tangent, the Lost and the Damned is similar to the Locust God in that it creates creature tokens from its triggered ability. While they don't have any keywords, getting a bunch of free 3-3s for absolutely no effort adds up, especially when chaining into a bunch of cards. Mizik's Replica Rider and Nalfeshni are absolutely insane in this deck since they copy whatever is being cast from exile. Unfortunately, Mizik's requires paying 2 mana to do so. At least you're saving that mana from foretelling it with Egg again. Fortunately, Nalfeshni does it for free, but it does cost 1 more mana to cast. At least both of them are flyers with 4 power, which is decent for their mana value. Wild Magic Sorcerer gives Cascade to the first spell we cast from Exile each turn. This has the potential of doing a lot of work if we manage to cast a spell each turn. Since it cares about the mana value of the spell and not the mana we paid for it, if we just paid 1 mana for a spell, but it had a mana value of 3, we can Cascade until we hit a spell with mana value 2 or less and cast it for free. This is some epic value. Sage of the Beyond also cares about the cards we cast elsewhere from our hand. It reduces the cost of those spells by 2. This makes foretelling our spells even better. We can just foretell a spell we're going to cast immediately afterwards if we wanted to because doing so with the Sage in play means it'll cost 2 less. So if we did this with something like the Locust God, it will only all cost us 2 generic 1 blue and 1 red to cast, with the 2 generic being paid via Edgin's foretell effect, so we'd only pay 4 mana total for it. It also helps with casting Edgin from the command zone, at the very least covering that first commander tax. Some more mana based foretell synergy can be found on Braid of Fire and Thran Turban. Since we can foretell whenever we have priority, we can essentially do so at instant speed so long as it's our turn. This means that we can use the 2 mana from Thran Turban to foretell one card from our hand during our upkeep essentially for free. Thanks to Braid of Fire, the more turns that pass, the more cards we can foretell at once in our upkeep thanks to it. Or we can also use all that red mana to sink into the X cost of our X costed instant spells to draw cards. Ancient Tomb, Guildless Commons, Izzet Boilerworks, and Temple of the False Guard also helps since they each tap for 2 mana. While I'm a bit hesitant about Temple of the False God since it requires 4 more lands to get online, we can always just foretell any cards in our hand until we hit that 5th land drop if we play it in the early game. The bounce lands are also useful on their own, especially with bouncing something like Mystic Sanctuary. This is amazing at recovering any wheel in our graveyard before casting another wheel so that we can wheel into a fresh one to wheel again. We can also do this at instant speed with 4 of the 7 fetch lands in the deck for that pro gamer move. So these lands have multiple functions here. Recall also that these 2 man land lands also pair amazingly with the previously mentioned Frantic Search, as well as some of the deck's counter spells. Fierce Guardianship, Negate, Mana Drain, Unwind, and Rewind comprise the deck's counter magic suite. Notice that the last two can untap lands after resolving. They cost more than normal counter spells, but we can always just foretell them in order to save them for a rainy day. Then, when we do spring the trap, not only are we paying for the colored cost of these two spells, but we're also untapping lands. Untapping any of the previously mentioned four lands makes them a bonus mana acceleration spell as well, 
just like Mana Drain. We can use all that generic mana to either power, spell, or foretell a bunch of them from our hand. If we wanted to, we could even foretell Fierce Guardianship in order to be able to cast it for just one blue if we didn't control Edgin, which is still amazing value. In any case, it's good to foretell these counter spells in response to any wheels so that we don't lose to them. Cosmos Charger also helps in the mana acceleration department by reducing the cost of foretelling our spells by one generic mana. Not only does this mean we can essentially foretell two cards for the price of one with Edgin, but we can also foretell during any player's turn, which is beyond busted with this deck. Speaking of other players' turns, Leyline of Anticipation is included in order to help us play any spell at instant speed. This really turns any face down card we foretold into a potential trap, making opponents uneasy. We can play outside of our turn, but we can still foretell first in order to make them cheaper in the future when we need to. The following cards are the deck's protective effects and mana acceleration pieces. Champion's Helm, Giant's Amulet, Lightning Greaves, and Swiftfoot Boots are included not so much for Edgin, since he's relatively cheap to cast and the deck can still function without him, but mostly for those key creatures the deck uses to close out games. As for Mana Acceleration, Wafer's Bobble, Navigation Orb, and Burnish Heart are the land-based ramp effects, while Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Izzet Signet, and Talisman of Creativity are the remaining mana rocks. While land-based ramp is best, being able to foretell these rocks for just 2 mana means that we can cast them for free afterwards. This helps when we want to quote unquote cast them in between wheel effects without losing them. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running Steam Vents, Volatile Fjord, Molten Tributary, Training Center, Stormcarved Coast, Sulphur Falls, Cascade Bluffs, Shivan Reef, and Command Tower, as well as six of each basic land for the land based ramp effects. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget. Whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Edgin Larsenist Ludenist. While there are many different ways you could build Eldgin, I decided to go with a more spell slinger type deck full of wheels and loot effects to kill off opponents with either death by a thousand cuts or by a huge storm of pain from chaining into wheels. However, another idea rolling around in my head was an artifacts matter build since the two generic paid to foretell the artifact is deducted from their casting cost later on. So like I said, many different ways to build Edgin. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Medded Kirby and happy brewing. <laughs>